All right, so here we are once again in the midst of a penguin colony and um, some interesting stones, JNATs. Anyway, so I have these three stones out and, uh, you know, um, normally, you know, when uh, we're talking about, you know, straight razors, right, um, there's a lot of focus on you know, the finishing and, the, and, and, you know, edge sharpness as a result of finishing and the maximum sharpness and keen and smooth. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> there's a lot behind all of that. This right here and this little video is um, going to touch base, just touch base on uh, mid-range, you know. Uh, you've heard me reference uh, something called the pushed edge, uh, maximum refinement refinement versus just sharpening um sharp is easy smooth is not that kind of thing um to me that um level of sharpening and honing has its roots in two places bevel set mid-range the finish is important yeah sure but the finish work is like a fraction of a percent compared to what goes on in these stages and uh, bevel set actually is the the bigger part of the story but um so percentage wise you have this this lion share with uh, bevel set and then you have a smaller section of uh, mid-range you know and i'm talking about work amount here not like value because it all factors in so how do you measure that so anyway so you have a bevel set then you have like a mid-range and then you have finish you know iwasaki talked about you know, spending more time on the earlier grits and all of that. So none of this is new. I'm just putting it into uh, Keith E's. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, my penguins had fallen over. So like they do this sometimes. Like, ah! Anyway, um, I, I don't like them when they're lying on their backs. I like them when they're uh, standing up straight. Anyway, back to mid-range, right? So I have three uh, stones here. You have uh, Omura. Uh, frequently referred to as Amora Doe. Okay, the Doe or Toe would be stone, right? So Amora Stone, uh, Kasai, Bensue, right? Um, theoretically, if we were talking about a sword polishers regiment, okay, and these are all, <clears throat> and, uh, there's no official a anything here. You notice there's no stamps, there's no, you know, whatever. Uh, these are all what I call sword grade. These all were hand picked by a polisher for me. Um, they're super clean, and they are exactly what they're supposed to be. They're not drugstore or supermarket or hardware store stones. If you go to Japan, you can go to like the equivalent of like a Home Depot, and you can pick up an Amakusa for like uh, fifteen dollars U.S. equivalent. And um, you don't want that stone for anything, not for knives. You can sharpen knives on it, sure. But trust me, you don't want that stone. It's garbage, okay? Most of the time. I'm sure you can get lucky. All right. Um, but anyway, so, but you have guys who polish swords and they get cleaner examples. They cost more. Uh, they're usually giant, big stones. Like you see here, bench size. And uh, they don't come shrink wrapped in plastic with cute labels or anything. You go to a shop where you pick and you test, you know, and um, so on and so forth. So that's what this is. I have eyes and hands over there. They help me out. So this is Omura. Okay. So like if you were doing, like you want to talk about sword polishing in a general sense, you have Kongo-do, you have Arato, you have Nakato, Shiagito. Okay. Um, <clears throat> in, in a very loose sense, somebody might confuse this with Congo Do, but it's really not that coarse. Uh, Congo Do is a very coarse carborundum type of stone. Uh, I don't know if it's a natural, I don't know what it is, but it's really coarse and it's done for mad, crazy steel removal on very damaged swords. You would never use it on, on a razor or even a kitchen knife for the most part, but you will hear people talk about them. The reality is for most of us that do like homeowner stuff <laughs> um you'll you'll find people calling this arato okay and it is coarse okay it is a sandstone type of thing um this particular example does come from kyushu okay it's high quality 
uh, you will find Omora uh, from other places. I'm not sure if that's really Omora or a stone that can be substituted. And this is something you have to be aware of. Language isn't always this like anal retentive Excel spreadsheet type of perfect thing in Japan when it comes to these stones, right? Like Igarishi, right? You'll find Igarishi is actually just relabeled Amakusa or the real stuff that comes from Nagata, okay, that like will turn blue. Okay, that's the real stone, but you'll find like a type of amakusa that will substitute, so people will call it that. They're not trying to dope fiend you, it's just the way it is. Western thinking, everyone gets batshit over it, but then you get confusion because people think, oh, I got an Igarishi and it sucks. Well, no, you have an amakusa and that's what it should do. Anyway, we have this, I would put this on the low end of the scale, very low mid-range, Nakata would be mid-range, Arato would be your groundwork, it's either high Arato, low uh, Nakato, for me, this stone right here, it doesn't mean every single Omura is the same, it's a natural stone, but this one here, that's what it is, right, so if you take a look at this, you will see that it's fairly thirsty, because that was water I just sprayed on there from my little water bottle. And it just drinks it up. Now, I'm not going to sit here and try and get this so wet that it doesn't drink any more water. That would be another video if you guys are interested. So you got to let me know. This is sort of an esoteric thing for guys who hone razors. And maybe even a little esoteric for guys who do knives because... You know, um, I, I don't know where the cutlery world is at right now with Japanese whetstones. I remember back when I got involved online that like I would go to forums and guys had lots of stones and they were using all kinds of stuff. I don't know what's going on there now. For all I know, they're just using synthetics and finishing on, um, <clears throat> you know, harder tomes um, or whatever. I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I assume that there are people that are still using this stuff for uh, sharpening knives, but like... I don't know, but you know, my channel basically is aimed at razor users, and this is really esoteric for a razor guy, okay? Um, stone like this and this type of sharpening is really for someone who likes to sharpen. Uh, what is this? Uh, this is some kind of weird knife. I, I, I don't know what it's, I think it's from like the world of shoemaking. I thought it was a reed knife, but it's not a reed knife. It's just something, someone gave me a bunch of them. I use them for odds and ends. Um, there's a little bit of flex in the blade. It's not unlike a razor. Um, it won't hold an edge like a razor, but if I put uh, a little bit steeper bevel on it, I, I do okay. And I beat the hell out of them. So right now, this has an edge. I could cut something, but it's not great. Anyway, so if I was using this, right, this is about the angle I would use. Right, uh, getting in here. Now you can feel, you hear it's a little gritty, right? But it's also very smooth and consistent. So you can actually use this with a razor. <clears throat> it is not a stone I would recommend to a beginner for a razor because you would need to have a, an advanced skill set. <clears throat> In that you would have to know like when and if you were going too far, how to gauge your pressure. So this would be for someone who's like really into it. However, for somebody doing knives who's really into it, this is like golden. Okay, I, I use this actually to tune up a chef's knife. I actually come right off of this. If I'm just doing like like what I call hard work, boning out chickens, and all I need is a toothy edge, and I got to get in there and cut, and I'm just going to bang it up on bones left and right, <clears throat> I'll just come right off the stone. I might hit it on the strop for like well, a few passes to relieve any additional uh, bar that I didn't hone out. But um, anyway, you, you notice the stone is still a little damp. It's still soaking in, but all right, so it's porous, it's thirsty, but it's not killing me. It's not like a, a king red brick where I would do that and it would like look dry, all right? And, um, you know, got this going on. Let me see. We'll pick that up. Okay, I got a little bit of swarf going on there, right? So it's cutting. It's cutting nice. And, um, You know, I put a nice, yeah, I don't know. Can I pick up something here and cut it and like show you guys? I don't know. All right, so this is like stupid dick horsehide, okay? This wouldn't fold most 
blades of this size okay but you see i just put this like look at that it's super clean okay that's like right off the stone i trust me before <clears throat> i got on this stone i i was gonna struggle like crazy with that um this has got glue on the back okay this <laughs> and it's like nine ounce and it's hard rolled okay this is not shoe well it is kind of like a shoe leather it's more like saddle leather this is really tough stuff so the fact that i just cut into here like this that's incredible okay and that's just after a little bit of work on here you know it's i, I could really go to town and really bring up a nice edge gauge my pressure what have you um really really nice stone or more though i have some place where are they? here it is i i actually i use this um <clears throat> for dressing the top um and making a little bit of slurry it, it's a little big in fact, I have this on my Etsy store, um, and I'm going to be getting more of them. But um, as someone who likes to sharpen, really, you look into these stones. They're not too expensive, and they're really highly functional, and you have a great time with them. I mean, you know, it just turned this into a wicked cutting tool in like 45 seconds. Anyway. Sorry about that. <laughs> Had to clear the bench. Anyway. Binsway. Okay, Binsway is also often mislabeled. Um, what do you call that stuff? Uh, Amakusa. Amakusa comes white, it comes um, red. The red stuff is very striped. It's like a devil stone. Um, you will see it listed as 800X. Yeah, you know, I don't know. It's kind of hard. People want to know what this stone right here is. Uh, you know, Amakusa White would theoretically be around 1K or uh, 1.5K or something. Uh, this is not Amakusa. It's not in that ballpark. This is more of a mid-range stone, but it's very pressure sensitive. In other words, depending on how you run your pressure is going to really affect how you're cutting. And um, I know that might sound like stupid because that would be the same with a lot of stones. But no, it really isn't. Okay, some stones like have a, a it, you can push more, but it's only going to cut to a certain point. With this, it's almost seemingly infinite. In other words, if you go pressureless on this, you'll have like almost four or five K. Effectively, it's not four or five K. Okay, there are no K. No K in here. Okay. Um but um, if you lean into it, you get uh, a really good cutting action. And again, you're at early mid-range. So for a sword polisher, okay, it would be the second stone, Kasaito, right? And this would remove all the scratches from uh, the previous stone, which would be Kongodo, but might possibly be Omora, which is not a Congo though, but it could be in that spot. I know it gets all confusing. Try not to be so anal retentive and try not to get into expertitis where people want to, well, I thought, yeah, stop thinking. Okay, do, do you polish razors? I mean, excuse me, do you polish swords? Um, <clears throat> Cause if you talk to people who do, man, it's like a completely different story than what you read on paper. It's not like ABC one, two, three LMNOP. No, not at all like that. It's like AZQM 1645 dot slash underscore question mark. <clears throat> all right. Um, anyway, good mid range. Love this stone. Very clean. Uh, for razors, I would put this post bevel set. Um, <clears throat> I would put it before something like uh, Tsushima Black, which is also hard. This is hard. It's also a little thirsty. Let's see if we can pick this up. See, it like gets a little yellowy here. But you can see, uh, I'm going to try and catch it in the light. Let's see, follow the water line. You can see it's like sort of soaking in a little bit. You know, so it's more thirsty than some stones, uh, a little less thirsty than Omora because it didn't just like completely disappear. Um, again, uh, great for knives, great for cutlery, plausible for mid-range, for um, straight razors. I would not hesitate to somebody to use a stone of this quality for mid-range for a razor. Same as Tsushima Black, um, TSB. Um, I see it being sold, by the way, as a 12K finisher. I, I, I don't know what those people are smoking. And then I read a thing on a forum where the guy's like trying to stand up for like he got a 12K one. 
really? Oh, wow. I mean, could you buy me a lottery ticket? Because <laughs> that's freaking amazing. Um, yeah, all naturals are different, but no TSB is ever going to be 12K. I don't care who says what. If you think you got one, send it to me and I will show you 18 ways how it isn't. <clears throat> Maybe you have a stone that's something else being called the Tsushima Black. But anyway, again, I would put the TSB up at about like 7K, for example, and I would put this lower. All right. So, you know, I do like Macau and Agur, and that's how I usually do my mid-range. But I like the hone. I like the stones. I like to experience different things. And each edge is a composite. It, it's a sum of its parts. So an edge mid-range on these stones is actually going to be like a little different personality-wise than one done another way. And all right, I don't know if you can see, but I, I got Swarf here in very short order. Um, let me take shorter passes. Um, I actually don't like to. So this is a good cutter, right? This is actually kind of a difficult blade to do one-handed because, well, the way I hone, I like to use my free hand to gauge my angle, especially on something with a bevel like this one. But I definitely have, uh, what do you call it here? I have a uh, Good amount of swarf on this stone in very short order. And uh, th this is very hard carbon steel. It, this is not your typical, like, 56 uh, Rockwell utility knife. This is an industry blade. It's made to be really hard. Um, <clears throat> see if I can... Uh, again, okay, so um, if I look at this with a loop... You can't really see it. I, I can't show you here, but the shorter cut is a little more smoother than the longer one was. So I have edge uh, improvement from short term uh, work on this. Uh, granted, this is going to need a bunch more work. I would spend a good amount of time on this. And that's why I was talking about, that's what I was referring to with a pushed edge having its roots in the mid-range. I would really advance the state of the edge with this so I get to max. And then if I have distractions, which is what happens when you work a lot on a stone, I work hard to remove that. <clears throat> okay, I, may, I still may have a liability at the edge in the sense that it won't last as long because <clears throat> the edge thickness right behind the apex is going to be reduced. But I'm not really concerned uh, so much about edge duration, especially on a knife like this or a razor. Um, if I can get, you know, uh, anywhere between 20 and 40, like, slamming shaves on a razor, I'm good. All right? Theoretically, you should get, like, 100 before you need to touch anything for touch-up. But I, I don't care. I like to hone. I hone all the time, and I prefer fresh off the stone feeling anyway. So I'm really probably only going to go 12 times and then rehome. That's me, you know, I'm not saying you should do that or if it's a good idea or what, but that's me. All right. <clears throat> so that was Binsway. Now I have Kisai. This is rare. This is uh, very rare stuff. Um, they come from uh, Yamagata. Uh, the mine, the quarry was closed a long time ago. Most of what you see, if you do get lucky to find a real one, and this is absolutely 100% authentic aside, though, um, it's going to be loaded with uh, bad rust lines, and you're just going to have to, like, go way out of your way to use it. This is stupid clean, all right? I think there's down here, there's a little tiny inclusion that may be a, a rust line. I, I don't think it's rust, but it could be. I didn't investigate it because I was sealing it, but it doesn't come up. It's very superficial. It's, it, you don't, you know, comes through to like here, here, right? That's like all the way down there. I, I don't, it's not a problem for me. Um, I still have some saw marks or whatever. I, I don't know what it is, but it's a little rough here. Um, I, I did some razors down this end. I did a bunch of uh, cutlery on top. 
this would be the third step in the stone uh, polishing, uh, excuse me, sword polishing uh, regimen for uh, Togishi. This would remove all of the marks from Binsue. The next stone after this would be Chu Nagurado, and that's on paper. The polisher may not go to Chu. He may use this Majiro. He may use one of these. Okay, I'll be shooting this with my Etsy store later. This is uh, sword grade Majiro. Stupid rare, awesome mid range, high end, high end mid range. Just this is like almost like a block of coma is what this is just about. It has a little bit of weirdness here, but anybody who does any type of sharpening, like <laughs> this is both a serious collector's piece and a super duper user. So Togishi may go to this after this. <clears throat> Again, if you read, you know, the book, it'll say, you know, followed by, you know, Chu Nagura though. Okay, fine, whatever. In other words, the Chu is a theory, okay? It, it's a, it's a, an essence of sharpening, but it may not be exactly what goes on. But back to this. The color really pops, okay? If you run your fingers over this and the Bensway, this might feel a little more coarse. Um, it's a little more dense. You can see it's almost not soaking in at all, just a little tiny bit. <clears throat> um, refinement level difference is not great. It's not like going from a 1K to a 3K. It's not like that, okay? These are subtle cutters, okay? Um, to remove the marks I made with Binsue, I have to really work this stuff, okay? Again, this is part of what I was saying. Okay, and I got good swarf here. I I'm not going to go nuts. I don't want to be here for 45 minutes on this stone, you guys. Okay, uh, I want to find out if, if you're all interested in these stones, and, you know, then I could go one by one, you know? Stone needs to be flatter. It's still working uh, for this intended purpose. It's absolutely fine. Um, okay, you can't tell. I can tell, okay? That cut was markedly better than either of the first two. <clears throat> if you're not an edge freak, you won't really notice. It might not matter to you to do all these middle steps, okay? You might just want to go from, well, if you're using synthetics for knives, I would say a lot of people on the low end start like 320, if you have incredible uh, repair work, you might go to 220, but 320 is about as low, 320, 400, all right? And then you jump from there to like 800 or 1K. That's what I do. You might be finished at 1K and be done. You might not even want to go there. You might have a 600 <coughs> or uh, or an 800 and, and do that and be done. You'll eyeball the edge. It'll be polished and you'll be cutting. If you get into uh, refinement stages, where you have toothy, more toothy, less toothy, high polish. If you got Katsumi, where you have clad steel, then you have all kinds of other concerns where you want to have both like Haman look and you, and you want to like show off that, that metal work and you want that like incredible edge on a very steep bevel on like, I don't know, Adiba, Nakiri, uh, any one of those plates. Anyway, I just want to show you this stuff. I think it's interesting. I love mid-range. I'm all about it. I have for a long time wanted to get my hands on an authentic Kasai. Um, I have it now. I've been using it. Um, I can get a couple of more. I'm probably going to put this in my Etsy store. The Omora is already there and the Binsway is definitely going to go there because I'm probably going to get more of them too. And, um, you know, um, we'll see how it goes from there, but it's not really about selling. It's about learning about mid-range and sharpening, you know. Um, just want to let you know they're available. I'm not just taunting you with these pretty creamsicle patterns, you know. These are usable items that are uh, famous in their own circles. Uh, this one is exceedingly rare. The Binsway in that condition is exceedingly rare. Condition in that quality level is exceedingly rare. <coughs> um, like any Kasai is, 
exceedingly rare. One this clean is like super rare. Um, Binswe is available. Um, a, a super clean one is hard to get. And Omora is you just don't see a lot of it. You just don't. Um, not real Omora. You might see a Miss Markstone. And one that's that clean is uh, hard to get also. And, uh, you know, I seal them all up and whatever. Anyway, it's about having fun. Okay, that's, you know, <clears throat> what my thing is with sharpening, enjoying my time on the stone, enjoying, like, the the reaping the benefits of the edge. Like, I have a dinner to make later, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to, like, I don't know, I'm going to do some damage to some vegetables and I'm going to be doing some, uh, breaking out some chickens or something. And, you know, I want my edges to perform. Um, I'm going to shave later and I'm going to be using this and I'm going to really enjoy the fact that my whiskers fly off my face as though they were never even there. And that my face will feel like, you know, a porcelain bowl for like 24 hours. That's what it's all about to me. Okay. So anyway, with that, listen, uh, remember, keep it fun. Be happy. Enjoy your stuff your honing stuff. Always enjoy your honing. Uh, avoid the people who are like nasty and angry all the time. And, uh, especially the ones with like the fast answers that don't seem to make a lot of sense. Trust your guts. Um, and, uh, get back to me. If you want to hear more about these mid range stones, I'll do a little more delving into them. Okay. I haven't as of yet because everyone's always asking about super hard finishes and this and that. And, you know, it's funny. It's like super hard finishes are great. And that's what I usually gravitate to. But I'll tell everyone time and time again, don't chase the finisher, chase your bevel setter. Remember, it's all about the bevel. <laughs> anyway, take care. Have fun. I'll talk to you soon.